Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and I'm back with another Commandery Guide video. After reviewing Liu Bei's Dong and Sun Jian's Changsha, I decided we'd wrap up the big three today by looking at Cao Cao's starting Commandery of Chen. Because it is Cao Cao's starting Commandery, we'll be doing most of this guide through the eyes of a Cao Cao player. Let's get started. First off, let's find Chen on the map. The capital of Chen is located here, in the middle of all the action. Aside from its capital, Chen also has two counties. One livestock farm located south of the capital, and a farmland located to the west. The farmland belongs to one of the two faction unique building chains for Cao Cao. As Cao Cao, you can forgo the typical grain field upgrades and instead build a separate grain farming garrison chain. The major change between the two here are a higher upgrade cost, slightly lower food production, and an increased replenishment. The garrison building chain can also provide arrow tower defense for battle maps. We will now be diving deeper into these counties to determine how to best build Chen. First off, we have the livestock farm. It starts the game being a level 2 livestock corral under the control of the Han, and it's part of the first turn mission for Cao Cao, so you'll be capturing it on turn 1. The livestock farm as a specialty county shines in that they provide food and peasantry income without any upkeep costs. In terms of battles, livestock farm does not provide any defensible structure, therefore it is an easy target to lose, but also an easy target to capture. The building chain for livestock farm does not diverge until level 5, where you have the choice between more food and less income, or more f income and less food. Food can be more efficiently acquired from other counties like the farmland, so I recommend going for the Grand Livestock Estate here for the higher peasantry income. Next we'll be looking at the farmland. The Chen farmland also starts the game at level 2 and also in the control of the High Empire. Its building chain is straightforward without any branching. With each upgrade you simply gain more food at the cost of a higher upkeep. Alternatively, as Cao Cao, you can convert the grain farm to a grain garrison farm with even higher upkeep costs each, le each level, less food, but with the added bonus of providing replenishment to the local commandery. If you end up utilizing Chen as a military base, which is something we'll be discussing later in this guide, then this higher upkeep cost and lower food production will make sense for you. At this point, however, I think it's safe to say from an economic perspective, which is the main focus of these guys, Chen is best utilized as a peasantry-focused commander. So let's start by talking about build path. The town of Chen starts at level 2, with a level 2 land development building in the land registry office, and a blank building slot on turn 1. The first order of business is once again determine what to build here. And without even an ounce of doubt, the best option here is the tax collection building. Because we're not only building at this time to save money and provide a discount to industry buildings like we did for Changsha, we actually want the peasantry income it produced. And before we go any farther, I want to introduce a new concept here that has been largely ignored in all my previous commandery guides. And it is the concept of fertility. In the game, all commanderies are assigned one of three levels of fertility. Low fertility, average fertility, and high fertility. And depending on the season, your commandery will get different levels of buffs or debuffs to peasantry income and fruit production depending on its fertility level. Chen is for for fortunately enough to be a high fertility commandery. So during the spring, summer, and autumn seasons, Chen receives 25% bonus to fruit production and peasantry income. During the harvest season, the peasantry income bonus jumps to 50%. Winter causes minus 25% military supplies and minus 25% peasantry income across all levels of fertility. You can check out these fertility levels for your commandery by looking at the lower left corner of the screen when you have a commandery selected. It is represented by a rice bowl symbol. Now, let's jump back to building Chen. Once again, we'll be looking at the build in terms of maximum build by tiers. The first tier will be the small city tier, with three max slots. Here you can have a level 4 land development building that sells food instead of produce food for a higher peasantry income. A peasantry income multiplier focused level 4 building, a government support building 
and the level 5 tax collection building. Both counties can be upgraded all the way to level 5 to add the maximum amount of peasantry income and food for the commandery. But to save some money and reforms needed, it is possible to not upgrade the farmland all the way to level 5. A level 3 farmland here is sufficient enough to provide enough food for this build. But overall, this build provides a decent income of around 2000 per turn without any farther buffs from assignments and administrators, which can easily add another 500 to 1000 gold per turn. Some might have noticed that we have a bit of a commerce income multiplier from the settlement that's going to waste with this build, or might have noticed that a level 5 tax collector creates so much negative public order that it might be better to instead build an inn. The inn has many benefits, as it can reduce the cost of upgrading all um, agricultural buildings and avoid public order issues from the tax building. However, if we take a look here, the income from the building the guest house is so much less and also harder to efficiently buff in this commandery uh, with assignments administrator that it's just not worth it in terms of income. Instead, we should stick with the tax building and just have an army nearby to farm the rebels that will arrive from time to time. If you don't want to go with this approach, it's understandable because it, it is kind of like cheesing the game. Then we can try to fight this public order with the right buildings. Right now, your city will have a 1.8 population cap because the small city provides 800k population cap and each county always provides 500k population cap. At the level of 1.8 million population, you will have a minus 10 public order from population. Public order from population increases uh, as your population increases. It is not a crowding effect. Uh, by building a more upgraded settlement, you'll be just increasing your public order. This is something to keep in mind. The tax building itself brings a negative 20 uh, public disorder, but the reforms needed to build a level 5 tax building will add back 5 public order. So we're running at a total of negative 25 public order in Chen with this build right now. Or basically, we'll be seeing one rebellion every four turns. If I can't convince you to farm that rebellion for experienced golden items, then you can upgrade your small city to a city. The increase in population will only be 200k, so the total, total public disorder from population will not change here. That makes a jump every 250k. And in the new slot, uh, you can build a level 3 confusion temple for 16 points of public order. I took out the farmland to save space, but all the stats are still reflected in the numbers on the page. And aside from the plus 16 points on the building itself, you get three more points from the reforms needed to build this building for a total of plus 19. Now Chen will be a negative 6 public order build, uh, commandery. And this can be farther reduced with the right administrator or a small garrison nearby. So it can be easily a rebellion-free city. It will cost you a bit of upkeep in the temple, but if you want to see happy green faces in the city, this is a small price to pay. You can further combat the public order issue when you upgrade the city to a level 7 small regional city, where you can add a level 5 variant of the military infrastructure building of your choice for more help with public order. It does add a higher upkeep, but it also adds a bigger garrison to protect the city. Once again, I took out the livestock farm info here to save space, but all the income numbers are correct and reflect all the buildings and counties. At a small regional city, Chen now produced a respectable income level of 2,716.5 per turn, which obviously can be further boosted uh, when you provide administrators and the right assignments. And it can be farther boosted if you upgrade this building, uh, the city, to a regional city. Because then you can add a level 5 in building, which can finally take advantage of the commerce multipliers from settlements and the level 5 land development building to boost the final income of Chen to 3,735.25 a turn. Add in some administrator assignments, Chen can potentially be a 5,000 gold per turn commandery, which is very good. Alternatively, we can ignore Chen as a potential income source and make it the military stronghold for Cao Cao. 
Because of its centralized location on the map, we can totally utilize Chen as the base to launch our attacks north, south, east, and west. At the small town tier, we can now rebuild Chen uh, by building Cao Cao's unique building of Tun Tian. Uh, Tun Tian replaces the standard conscription building. This building provides deployment discounts, 25% to food production, and most importantly, plus three ranks for all recruits. This is huge. So instead of recruiting new units at level one, you're now recruiting them at level four. Since we're building the Chen as a military base and not as an income generator, we can also build the farmland as a garrison, which will add replenishment rate in the county, in not just in the county, in the whole commandery, to speed up new recruits. This approach to Chen can be further upgraded when you upgrade Chen to a city where you can add a military infrastructure building. When you finally have Chen as a small regional city, you can upgrade that military infrastructure building to a level 5 White Horse Fellow Raiding Party, which will add another rank to any new cavalry recruit. Add on the potential bonuses from a leader, heir, and prime minister, which can all add one additional level to new recruits, you can potentially have Chen produce level 8 Tiger and Leopard Cavalry with fresh recruits. This is amazing and will make your cavalry charges much more devastating. A forge can also be added in uh, when you have a small regional city to save some money when you recruit these new units. The income of Chen however will suffer to just a meager 1684.5 gold per turn, but the military might it grants you cannot be understated. Lastly, we'll take a look at the adjacency of Chen, although it is less relevant here, as we will not be building any adjacency-related buildings to fight corruption, but we can still use adjacency to receive those bonuses from our adjacent commanderies. Around Chen, you have Yinchuan, Luoyang, Nanyang, Ruyang, Yangzhou, and Pengcheng, for a total of six adjacent commandery, making it an average commandery in terms of adjacency. Overall, I give Chen three stars as a commandery. It has an above average potential for peasantry income, but by having a farmland instead of a lumber camp or a fishing port, it doesn't fully maximize its peasantry income potential. Commerce relies on the bare minimum multipliers from settlement and land development upgrades. Industry synergies are completely non-existent. Food production gets five stars here because both specialty counties produces food, and Chen also is a high fertility commandery. Adjacency is not bad, but the lack of industry support make it mostly irrelevant, so it gets two stars here. Overall, Chen can be a four-star commandery if you place a higher value on military, but it's inefficient because you only receive those military bonuses if you play a Cao Cao because you have to fully utilize both of your unique buildings. Therefore, I can only give it three stars in general. Once again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and comment below to support the channel. I am planning to continue making these videos focusing on the starting commanderies of different factions, so please let me know which one you will like next. Also, starting next week, I'll be beginning a more heavily edited legendary blood DLC Cao Cao Let's Play on the channel, as well as a new video series on character skill tree for all five classes. Hope y'all stay tuned for that, and see you next time. Bye!